In this video I'm going to show you step by step how to shape the neck. It's the last thing I do before the instrument is finished, so it's pretty exciting. Uh, if you want to see more videos about violin making, please go to my channel, subscribe yourself and there's a whole lot more you can enjoy. These are the tools I use for shaping the neck. So I have my knife here, where I will use for removing most of the wood, a flat chisel, just a normal half round file and two rasps. Uh, just a, a normal one and a very rough one. Then very handy are these two blocks. I call them sanding blocks. And it's a flat one, a straight one, and it's a curved one. This kind of an ellipse shape. And I wrap some sandpaper around it and I use it to correct shapes and finish, uh, finish things. So the sandpaper is 120 grit, works very nice. Now that my neck is glued in, the first thing I'm gonna touch is the crown there. You see all the excess wood still around and that's the first thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna take away. So I will show you how to do this. First I will show you how it's gonna look in the end. I have a violin with which I just did. So here you see the crown part, all the excess wood is gone. So, and it runs in the exactly the same uh, surface as the heel here. So that's what I want. Another thing what you see is the crown part, it's still too thick. You can clearly see my edges are lower than the crown. That's because when I do my edges, they become thinner. So when the crown is almost finished and the rest of the neck too, I take this down at the same level. Like this, so I don't need to take too much wood off the edge there. So when I start, first thing what I do is one millimeter above the edge, I'm gonna cut through the fiber there. And then when I start taking off wood here, my wood is not, a, not gonna break into the edge. So, now the first part here is completely flush with the, with the heel, so, but you see my edge is still very rough, so now I'm gonna work on the edge and finish it towards the crown. So first thing, I'm gonna start working on the, on the contour, on how it, the line continues, and now you see runs like this and it still runs up so I still have to take a little bit and then when I'm almost there I'm gonna take off the corners and make it round as the rest of the edge and then it's even easier to see how it how it flows Yeah, I'm almost there. Make sure your edge has the same shape at the end than everywhere else. Also same height. That's what I do at least. 
now that I took off the sides of the of the crown, I can measure my width. And I, if you remember from previous video, I aimed for 21.5. And let's see, right there. Oh, 21.6 and a little bit. So I'm not, not gonna bother about that. It's perfect. And now that I know my width, I can start drawing out the crown. You see, I have my divider and I'm gonna draw the crown on there with the divider. It's 21.5, so I mark out the middle and I already done it and my middle is there. And you see, when I draw the circle, my center point is above the line of my edge. So it's probably on this one, it's, yeah, almost two millimeters above. And that will give me, when I draw my circle, that at the end, it, my circle already flows in inside there. Here I show you how it looks. So I went in there with a pencil, so you can see how it, how it looks. Center above the height of your edge, and then you get this. First thing what I do is I come, I'm gonna take a lot of wood on the heel and then on the neck itself with my knife. Here I do it with a flat chisel and I put in straight and I take off a lot of wood. That's it for now. You see, I stay away from my scratch line, a big, a big millimeter. And now I have all my wood here. And this I'm gonna take away with my knife, like this, and I'll try to show you how I do it. So that's how a roughed out neck looks like. And I'm gonna try to show you. And as you can see, it's still very rough, but my neck is still way too thick. So I, the only thing what I did is made it more or less round. And now I'm gonna go start working on the thickness of my neck and of course on the shape itself. As you can see, I'm reducing the thickness of my neck and I'm using one of my rasps and I'm just, I file this down and I want to go to a measurement here at the top, measure together with the fingerboard and I measure it with my caliper. And here I want to have a measurement of 18.5 millimeters. As you can see now, I'm still at 23. So a long way to go and here at the thickest part at the bottom, I want to have a thickness of 20 millimeters. And I'm now I'm at 25.5. So you see what I'm doing, bringing it down. And so the, the mid section there becomes flat and the more wood I take, the bigger it will become. So when it's too big, I start taking wood from the, from the sides, left and right. So it becomes smaller again, so it's easier to take it down. Of course, I'm also working on this shape and also on this shape, and I'm using a template for this. Now, actually, this template is not working very well for me. I'm only using this curve here. So the only thing what I do is look how it fits in there and look how it fits in there. It's working for me, so, but 
make something for yourself, what works for, for you. After getting to my required thickness, 18.5 and 20 there, probably now it's still a few tenths too high, but that's fine. You see, I have my flat surface, my profile is more or less what I want, but all the rest is still very rough. So now I switch the knife for a file. So I start filing my neck and what I'm gonna do is, I you see the middle part it's acting like a reference. So this is something I'm almost not gonna touch anymore. And then I'm gonna make my fingerboard also a reference. So I'm gonna start filing um, a surface, a flat surface, just that I'm barely touching the fingerboard. And this is, this is gonna act as a reference on the side. So then the only thing what I need to do next is bringing the part in the middle um, to do the required uh, roundness. As you can see in the meanwhile I attach the top nut and that's because I'm gonna shape the top nut together with the neck and the fingerboard so it becomes one part. I find that the easiest way, way to do it. So but for the bevel I work very much with the light so with the shadow so you can see what's going on. Um, that's a trick I can highly recommend is work with the light so you can see shapes otherwise it gets all blurry and you you can't see the the shape you're making so here I start making a bevel towards the, the fingerboard and as if you want to know what angle I'm using and I will try to show you it's gonna be the start of my round shape, my egg shape of the neck. So not too much like this, just a little bit already uh, down. What you want here for the connection is a very smooth transition. So the widest point of my pack box is gonna be probably one centimeter up. So you want the connection to be very smooth, especially on a viola. Because on a viola it's, it's already hard enough. Normally the pack box, if you have a shoulder one, is much wider. So now this pack box is quite wide, but then the fingerboard is only it's 24 so that's yeah almost like a like a violin my violins are a bit less or 23.7.8 so but the peg box is wider so the the transition there is more aggressive than on a violin that's why you want to keep an enough attention to to make it smooth When I file this end grain, I 
take very much attention on what my file is doing actually. So especially with the small file, it's very easy if you file like this, taking down the end grain of the ebony, it's very easy to make a mark there or a dip or it becomes too deep in this area. So yeah, watch out, watch out when you're doing this. Never work on a very uh, tiny spot, always make sure you work on a, on a bigger spot. And try not, if you file like this, try not to touch the fingerboard. I don't want to make any mark in my fingerboard there because that m would mean that I have to take off wood there and then my whole uh, curve, my whole side of the fingerboard changes. So. Slowly work your way down. So another thing what I would like to show you is that now that I made this reference surface, you see I went with my file, with my the flat surface into the fingerboard for about probably two millimeters. And that's because uh, at the end I want my fingerboard to become part of the, of the curve of the neck so that it doesn't stay a flat surface. No, it's part the middle there stays as wide as it is but here it becomes curved and then on the top I break it and I make a round surface so actually the whole thing blends together and as you can see I tried to keep it as parallel as possible and then all the way in the end it actually it runs inside the top nut and it comes out there so it's one surface. So both sides are equal now. A reference here, same one over there, and then I have my middle. So my three reference surfaces are finished. Next thing what I'm gonna do is the rough area in between, I'm gonna divide in one, two, um, additional surfaces. Same on both sides so I can keep everything symmetrical. Very easy, just start and you use your previous line and the shadow line that start to develop here as a reference. So when this stays straight you know your second surface is gonna be parallel on the first one. You do the same with the other one. Keep them parallel and you use the, um, the shadow to work with. So here you can kind of see what I'm trying to, to explain you. After you finished all the surfaces and they are equal on both sides and your basic neck shape is there, you can blend them all together by just taking off the high points and start filing everything together. So you get a nice egg shape. That's another thing what I want to say is like my neck here is not half a circle. It's more like a, like an egg. It's not pointing, not at all, but it's not round either. So there's a little bit more wood out on the on the sides. So you get not a round one, but you, you get more of an egg shape like this. So here you can see the marks I've made with my knife. 
They're not too big. It's not clean at all, but I'm getting there. See, I try to keep them nice and parallel to each other. So I have full control of the shape. And very important in making the neck is how much wood you take out in this area. A lot of instruments, instruments have too much wood still here and there and there and there. It, you can make a really big difference if, if you're able to make a very comfortable neck. And it has a lot of, of to do with how much wood you take off in the side and in there. So take attention to this. The shape of the neck is completely finished. So as you can see, the surface is still rough. So you still see the marks of the file. But before I'm gonna clean everything, I'm gonna cut the chamfer on the, on the crown. So I do it now because I still have the possibility if I have to change something in the, in the shape here, I, st I still have the possibility to do it now. So what I do is I take my knife and I start cutting the chamfer on there. So more or less finished the chamfer. It's not 100% yet, uh, but when I'm finishing the rest of the neck, I'm gonna keep going over and over and detail the shape until it's perfect. So now I'll continue and all of this two marks before I start sanding, I like to take them away with the scraper because um, the scraper is gonna leave some marks too, but it's easier to get rid of the scraper marks than of the file marks with the sandpaper. So that's why I like to remove the file marks with the scraper before I start sanding. And I just, I go over it like this, also on the fingerboard. Not too detailed, it's just to, to, to clean most of the, this I will try to show you, this kind of marks of the file to take them out and then I start sanding. First sandpaper where, what I work with is a 150 very stiff paper, kind of cardboard, and I'm gonna use it as my first paper. And I like to use the stiff one because it's acting like a, a natural uh, file or, or something. It's, you use your fingers and your hand as, as a shaping tool and it takes out the, the little bumps and, and, and holes you, that you still have. So like this, I work my way up here at my chamfer. I never sand over the edge, so I stay inside. And I work like this. And also I always work in the length drifting in the lane direction and I would never start working like this because first of all you make scratches in this direction and also if you start doing this you lose control of the whole of the whole thing so work your way up blending everything together For, be very careful with the sharp edges you has, have here and also here on top. Don't sand over it because you lose all definition. After I sand it with a very rough one, the 150, this one, uh, I continued with the 240, 240 sandpaper, and this and like this, I blended everything together. So now actually the shape is completely finished. But very important what you do um, when going through the sanding process is I make it wet two or three times in between. So here you can see I just made it wet, wet and you see the wood fibers, they rise again. 
so two or three times and then you will see the fibers they stay flat and uh, you get a perfect smooth neck i will continue sanding with sandpaper now it's 240 i made it wet so i'm gonna do it again with 240 and then i'm gonna switch to 360 then probably made it make it wet again switch to uh, um, probably 400 i go to 600 and i end up with a 800 and then i polish it even more so that's it when everything is finished should look like this everything is very smooth there are no obvious bumps or dents. The fingerboard is one with the neck. The top nut runs very nice through. You don't see that there is a step or whatever. And that's it. That's a finished neck. Now that the neck is done, it's a finished viola. Something I really want to tell you is Try to do a, as good as a job as you can. It's so important that your neck is correctly shaped. It's the first thing somebody will hold on. It's the first impression you make and an instrument with a badly shaped neck, not a lot of musicians will, will like to play it. So I can't tell you enough. Take enough wood out of the neck. Don't leave it bulky. Uh, try to polish it as hard as you can. So it's smooth and everything flows together and that's, that's what you need to do. I hope you learned a lot and liked the video. If you have any comments or questions, please write them down below. If you want to keep updated with all the things I'm sharing, subscribe to my channel and stay tuned.